Hello, so I'm going to show you what VidGrid looks like when you make a VidGrid video. So you can see I'm in my VidGrid to get here. You need to go to VidGrid Teacher and you need to make sure that VidGrid is selected in your settings. So just as a reminder, click on Settings, go to Navigation. If VidGrid Teacher and Student, and you need both of them, are not there, you need to move them up. So they'd be like down here, for example. You need to move them back up to here. And make sure both are there. You can't just have one and not the other. Make sure to save that. And then you can click on a big grid teacher. All right, so I'm back at big grid teacher. Remember that you have to share these videos, by the way, with students. You can't just make them and think that students can click on big grid students, see all the big grid videos you made because you will see all the vid grids videos you made for all your classes. So all they're going to see is like if they installed the plugin for VidGrid, it'll say you can now watch videos. So I'm going to create a new VidGrid video. I will allow. And so you're going to see something like this. Um, there's a couple of things that I probably need to point out to you. One is this big red record button. You have to hit that in order to record something that you want to share. Um, there's an X here and also a minimize. So if you want to X out, you can do that. And here, this shows how much time is progressed in your video. This shows that, that volume is working. And you can also make your vid grid bigger by clicking those arrows there. So if you want to record, you can hit record and it'll show you something like this. And of course, you can pause the recording at any time. This is how you save a recording, with the little check mark there. And if you screw up, you have to, you know, basically trash it. So that's what the trash means. So I'm, if I wanna pause, I can do that, and I'll hit resume. And then you just hit that to finish recording. And what the video will do is that it'll process. And that takes a little bit of time, depending upon how long your video is. Uh, and then you'll get a little notification that says, oh, your video is complete. It's finished uploading. And it'll show up here. So I'm going to title this just sample. I'm going to exit out. And if I refresh this in my browser, I will see it. The only thing that I haven't liked about VidGrid is even though I say what I want to title it, it'll still show up as an untitled recording sometimes. It depends on when I put the title in. There I put it in after it had finished processing. So I think that's why it doesn't show it. To rename it, you will just select on rename and you can call it VidGrid. Hit save. And that's how it will save. By the way, I'm in my GenLec course, but again, I can see all my big grids for all my different classes here. Since um, there are some things I suppose I could share with you about this. If you do want to share it, make sure to copy the link. You can also embed it, but I usually just copy the link and share it. And if I embed it, I will embed it directly into a page. And I've already done that in a video, so I'm not going to show you how to do that. I think in the other VidGrid and Zoom video, I show you how to do that. And I think in the Canvas video too. Um, how I've been making some of these videos for you is that I've been downloading these. And so you can click on download and it'll download to your computer. And then you can see um, that. So that is how you can use VidGrid for your classes. This, remember, VidGrid is not live video. It's pre-recorded video. So if you just want to make a video that simply goes through an assignment for the week, you can do that there. So thank you.